why did you write this? Did they force you to write this? Why, why did you write this? Like, why? Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be the final video where I talk about the books that I read whilst I wasn't on booktube. And the books that I'm gonna talk about today are the books that I gave one or two stars. Um, there are only four of those books, so we will jump into them. The first book is Pizza Girl by Jean Kyung Fraser. I will read you the blurb and then we'll talk about <laughs> my thoughts about this book. So it says here, 18 year old pregnant and working as a pizza girl, a pizza delivery girl in the suburban Los Angeles, our charming dysfunctional heroine is deeply lost and in a complete denial about it all. She's grieving the death of her father, who has who she has more in common with than she'd like to admit, avoiding her supportive mum and loving boyfriend, and flagrantly ignoring her future. Her world is further upended when she becomes obsessed with stay-at-home mother with Jenny, a stay-at-home mother new to the neighbourhood who comes to depend on weekly deliveries of pickled covered pizzas for her son's happiness. As women, as one woman looks towards motherhood and the other towards middle age, the relationship between the two begins to blur in strange, complicated and ultimately heartbreaking ways. <laughs> this book was really interesting. So this was a net galley arc. I think pretty much all the books in here are net galley arcs, apart from one. Um, so I will leave a link to my Goodreads review down below so you can sort of see, I guess, really my immediate thoughts about this book. My thoughts haven't really changed. Um, so one of the things that I wrote in my review was, I felt this book gave us what should have been the first 15% of a story um, rather than the whole story. So what I'm trying to say there is basically the whole of the book felt like a build up to a different scene, <laughs> if I'm honest. And I felt like the whole sum of the book that we caught should have only been 15% of the book. There is definitely still 75% of a story that is left untold. And I don't really understand why the author did this. Like from beginning to end, there is absolutely no growth for this character. I mean, we have to assume there's growth at the end because we're never really told that. So like we say, we're dealing with our main character. I don't think we ever hear her name, um, but like they say there, she has a really supportive mum. She has a loving boyfriend obviously she's pregnant at the age of 18. She just feels very disengaged from everything and therefore I hate when you're reading about a character who is so disengaged from everything and who quite frankly sounds a bit spoiled um, and there's this assumption that you're supposed to feel a bit sorry for them and it's just a bit like well you're kind of you've kind of brought everything on yourself like you know you're in a position where actually you know perhaps most people don't want to be but your boyfriend really supports you he wants to have the baby he's decided to move in with you and your mum your mum really supports you and then she's just doing some really questionable things during her pregnancy that sort of endangers her and her unborn child. On top of that, she develops this obsession with this woman. Now, I feel like this blurb portrays it as if, you know, the obsession is mutual and these women become really close friends. I'm pretty sure this book takes space over the span of like a couple of weeks. It didn't feel like it took place over a really long time. And I just didn't really feel like actually they hung out that much outside of the, you know, normal pizza delivery kind of thing that was enough to justify building a relationship, as is suggested by the blurb, or even justify building the obsession. But I get the obsession part could be because of obviously someone with her predisp predisposition could take that on board and run. So that's fine. But I felt like we never really got any sort of relationship. So I find it really funny, like when I read the blurb back where it talks about the fact that one woman is heading towards middle age. Our main, that, well, our main character, the other character, Jenny, does sort of, talk about that but we see so very little of her that I don't really ever think that point is ever fully explored it's kind of a thing that yeah you've read about and then you put in the back of your head especially because you've got to understand right the reason why I think of it in this way is because she sees our main character probably like once a week so the kind of comments that she makes to our main character I'm like fine she might make that comment to you because you're a young girl you're 18 to her you have your whole life ahead of you but actually we don't know what she's like <laughs> outside of this main character so we see snippets of this woman we're told she's sort of anxious about heading towards middle age and I'm like I never really got that impression because I don't think like she would show like her real self to this random person so it was all a bit weird and basically what happens in this book is it builds up towards a scene that happens towards the end and the scene is just a bit lackluster if I'm honest <laughs> like actually the whole book felt very much like our main character a very slow and disengaged like action scene I suppose or you know the climax scene and then the sort of things that fall after I never really like we as a reader never get to delve into that resolve and I think it's in that resolve that we would be able to sort of connect more with our character and sort of see how I guess 
she betters herself but actually then the book just ends <laughs> and you're just like okay so this thing is happening we're told you know oh maybe she's getting some help or whatever and then bam you're done so it felt like a really unfinished book like i would have rated it more if it was actually more to the story but i just felt like why is this book half finished so yeah i will like i said leave my review down below so you can read more about that but i have basically told you what i thought actually no there's one last bit to talk about our character is half korean half american and she very much touches on about how her mum is how her mum sort of assimilated into american culture you can tell that our character wants to say more about this but she never does and i think it's actually because our character doesn't have the capacity to sort of speak on that and perhaps fully understand that um but i guess yeah there was a sort of edging towards it and talking about her experience as you know being half korean half american but then it's never really fully explored and it just feels very much in keeping with the character it's just so lackluster and lazy um and yeah so that's the other thing the next book that i read is ghost by dolly alderton and i gave this two stars honestly this was like a three star for read for me until it got to like 93 percent of the way through the book and then i was just like why did you write this? Did they force you to write this? Why, why did you write this? Like, why? So again, I'll read you what this book is about. Nina Dean has arrived at her early 30s as a successful food writer with loving friends, family, plus a new home and neighborhood. When she meets Max, a beguiling romantic hero who tells her on date one that he's planning to marry her, it, it feels like it's all going to plan. A new relationship couldn't have come at a better time. Her 30s have not been the liberating, uncomplicated experience she was sold. Everywhere she turns, she's reminded of time passing and opportunities dwindling. Friendships are failing, ex-boyfriends are moving on, and worse, everyone's moving to the suburbs. There's no solace to be found in her family with a mum who's caught in a baffling midlife makeover and a beloved dad who is vanishing in slow motion into dementia. And yada yada yada. So we have Nina Dean, food writer, whatever. Nina's character is really nice. Um, and basically what the theme of this book is, I guess, ghosts in the sense of ghosting. So obviously when you like go on a date with someone and then like a couple of dates later you never hear anything from them or even if it's first date, like, just when someone just completely disappears out of your life with no contact, you have no um, idea why. And then there's the idea of ghosts, I guess, of her dad becoming like a former shell of himself as he sort of, I guess, slowly drip, uh, slips into dementia. Um, so, you know, there are, I, I see the title, I see the themes, I really get it. Um, and I'm a huge fan of like Dolly Alderton's memoir. I have another sort of book thing that she wrote, another non-fiction thing. I really loved her pod podcast about um, love stories or something like that, which I think was done to sort of promote her book I'm gonna say I, I could be completely wrong um so really enjoy it and as I was reading this book I was like sure you know what this is a perfectly acceptable book the writing's fine um it's very much the contemporary romance novel you know it includes the use of tinder dating apps and just very modern things the book is also set in London so obviously I just love that um and yeah she meets this guy Max who you know promises her the world and all this stuff and then he just goes to her like they'll go on really serious dates like they'll go on weekends away and stuff like that and then he'll just disappear and um, you know she keeps on giving him these chances and he just keeps on just taking the absolute piss if I'm honest um but to be honest that's kind of the reality of dating in London and then obviously she's dealing with the fact that she's really close to her dad she's not really that close to her mum and you know she's basically losing her dad and she's really quite harsh on her mum if I'm honest I'm a bit like cut her some slack but whatever and then there's the other side of obviously her friend she has come out of a long-term relationship like ages and ages ago um and the like boyfriend or whatever she's actually quite good friends with him but he's also moving on with his life to quite serious things in his life um, and then obviously she has some friends that are single but then she has other friends who are actually moving towards you know really serious things in their relationship so she feels a bit displaced especially with this guy like ghosting her and things like that and it's a really lovely read like you get the sense that Nina is a very lovely person like you never really get the sense that she's horrible or anything like that like you know just some unfortunate things happen to her and she's trying to balance a lot so it doesn't really help that this guy just keeps being so hot and cold all the time now there's also an issue with her downstairs neighbour like he's Italian he's really shouty he's really loud and she just doesn't know what's going on or whatever so there's a bit of like bickering between them and things like that and all round it's a really lovely book like if you like romance I think you'll like this it's just very easy to read it's very easy to get through there comes a scene at 93% of the way through the book and I'm just like I get we needed to resolve this but this wasn't the way to resolve it and obviously it was so cringe to read maybe it's because I don't read a lot of romance now so I don't read a lot of romance that contains sex scenes but I don't think it's the fact that it contains sex it was just like 
I don't think <laughs> our character would have done that. It seems so out of character for our character. Um, and I think she even comments on that towards later when she talks about the incident and, you know, says like, you know, that will never happen again. And I'm just a bit confused as to why it happened at all. So that's my only sort of qualms about the book. I actually thought it was quite well written um, for her first fiction novel. Ghost was a net galley arc, so it will also link my Goodreads review down below. So the next book I'm going to speak about is also a net galley arc and that is Olive by Emma Gannon. This book, so I gave this book one star and then the other book I'm going to also speak about is the other book I gave one star. I want my time back, <laughs> like you know? It doesn't happen often that I say I want my time back, like I, I can vaguely remember saying this on camera a couple of times but it happens so rarely. But if I could erase the reading experience from, from my head and get my time back for what I spent on that book, I genuinely would. I think in my Goodreads, I'll link my Goodreads review down below, but there is nothing in there because I think I said I'd come back to update it, but I'm thankful this reading experience is over. The reason why I just honestly never updated it is because I hated the book. So I was just like, I'm just gonna sit here and slate the book. And I just, I don't know, I felt like it'd be really unfair. I think it's different when you give a book two stars and yeah, because you can sort of see some good bits to it, but when you give it one stars, I think, like, mm. that's not to say I didn't give, I didn't do a written review for the other one star. I just feel because this was a <laughs> an arc, um, I didn't want to be so horrible in the fact that people would obviously be looking at it prior to ordering or pre-ordering. But in the next gallery review, I did, you know, put my real thoughts. But I will try and summarise my thoughts really quickly here. So again, I'm going to read for you the blurb. It says here, Olive is many things, and it's okay she's still figuring it all out, navigating her world without a compass. But life, come, but, but life comes with expectations, and there are choices to be made, boxes to tick, and sometimes stereotypes to fulfil. And when her best friend's life start to branch away towards marriage and motherhood, leaving the path they've always followed together, Olive starts to question her choices, because life, according to Olive, looks a little bit different. A uh, moving memorable and a mirror for every woman at Crossroads, Olive has a little bit of us. Told with, a told with great warmth and nostalgia, this is a modern tale about the obstacle force of adulthood, Malso's decisions and taboo, and the taboo about choosing not to have children. So straight away where it says here, and when her best friend's life starts to branch away towards marriage and motherhood, leaving the path they've always followed together. This is what is wrong with this book. <laughs> the assumption that people don't change. Now, this book starts off with our main character Olive talk, uh, talking about her and her friends leaving university. It's like their last day, they're all moving out of the flat. And they've all been best friends since primary school. So, you know, she's like, nothing has changed since we've been primary school. So we've all been friends. Like, we're all going to still continue to do the same thing. Despite the fact that some of her friends have boyfriends and stuff like that. And I'm just like, okay, so what, did you have boyfriends when you were four as well? Um, so, <laughs> it says leaving the path they've always done together. I hate the fact that, you know, her focus on, and this is throughout the book, throughout all of her friends is that she's always assumed that they would always be as tight as they were before. So she doesn't understand anything else that's happening in their life, why that has sort of made them not feel like they are in secondary school or primary school, how it was in uni. And I'm just like, because life happens and people change, like, you know what I mean? Like you're not going, to, your friendship is not going to be the focal point of your life for the rest of your life, like how sad. But anyway, it starts off on that premise of showing us how great friends they are. So straight off the bat, like I feel like when you get something like that, you have a character who is very much not, is going to be resistant to any type of change. And so you, I think now in this point, all her friends are like in their thirties and stuff like that. So one already has a child and one is struggling with infertility issues and the other one is sort of in her career and then later also announces she's pregnant. So what happens during the course of this book is Olive basically splits up from her long-term boyfriend and the reason she splits up from her long-term boyfriend is because he wants children, she has actually realised that she doesn't want children. Um, and she hasn't told her friends, like she doesn't actually tell her friends for like a good three months, I'm assuming, throughout the course of this story. Um, and I guess that's because she's coming to grips with the decision that she's made. Now, the issue with this book that I find is Olive gets really annoyed at all her friends and how um, self-absorbed they are in all their lives and things like that. And and, you know the fact that they make comments about like her and her boyfriend having children and stuff like that because you know she's now realized she doesn't want children and that is the key point she has now realized it's not like throughout the time that they have all been friends she has been very vocal about the fact that she doesn't want children and it is very sad that society just automatically assumes that women want children and therefore her friends also automatically assume that she wants children um but she's also never said anything against it so she spends the whole book like raging at her friends and i'm like why are you raging at people that don't know if you just told them that you didn't want children they wouldn't say these comments 
but they're assuming that you have because you've never said otherwise and obviously because of the way society is set up that is their assumption so I feel like you're doing all this raging just tell them you don't want kids but obviously she hasn't also told them that she has split up from her boyfriend and she just feels like because there's never a right moment to do that and I just feel like well some at some point you're probably just gonna have to say it and that's because you know her friends probably have like other infertility issues going on a child is sick they need to go back home and things like that and I actually do get it in this story her friends do seem kind of quite self-absorbed but to me this makes sense because our main character it's also self-absorbed so I was reading the story and getting really frustrated that she was pointing out how selfish her friends were and I was like yeah well you all are that's why you're all friends clearly and I also one thing about the other friends at least when they're doing their selfish acts when they get called out on it you know they sort of try and resolve that whereas with Olive it felt like there was a lot of resentment from her <laughs> and she wasn't speaking about it so it was really weird to read the other thing with Olive is she works at a magazine and during the course of the magazine her editor or someone her boss um suggested to her to write about um some women who were going child free by choice so she's also exploring um you know being child free by choice through the avenue of her work and i think there is an event that she goes to and then she's supposed to sort of write about the event and there's you know still sort of all sorts of hilarity i guess amongst that I will say one thing, it felt like she had about three months to write this article and I was just like, surely this article has to come out So at some point. It felt like it took ages for her to go to the event and then ages after to we, that we heard she was actually writing about it. And at the end of the book, I'm not even sure she had actually written that article and I was just like, why do you have such a long lead time on this article? But the issue I find with that book, this book, other than the fact that the character, like honestly, I wanted to throw my Kindle across the room, like the character was so annoying. The issue I find mainly with this book is this book actually feels like these, these might be Emma Gannon's thoughts and then therefore she's just sort of created a fictional character and then the character says all these things. It reads really weirdly, like as someone's review on this said it reads like a series of tweets and I would agree. It, this book feels like there are certain tomics, topics that Emma wanted to cover a get around sort of being child free by choice and instead of making this like a fictional, a non-fiction title like maybe an essay collection, she made it a fictional book and it doesn't work. It doesn't work because the narrative or the character doesn't feel like fully fleshed out. It feels like you have all these thoughts and you've created the character and you've put them together and it just, it doesn't, it just doesn't read well. So it's a really for me it's a really weird book because I wanted to see you know the thoughts of someone who decided to go child free by choice um but it just felt like I was reading actually Emma's thoughts about it and she just plonked her character into it and the other thing I will say is I just don't think the book is really well written for me personally there were really little bits in the book that I just thought why is it in, why are these bits in here like she'd write, write stuff like oh she sat on the sofa and ate like messily on the sofa like you know crumbs falling everywhere and I was thinking okay maybe this is to indicate like I mean, the state of her her state of her life the state of her surroundings like she's a really messy person but then you never really got that so I was just like there were just these little bits that started to crop up that I think you know once a book is really irritating to you like why is that sentence there like why did we need to know that there were crumbs on her sofa like what relevance does that have to this scene um so overall it was a very <laughs> like annoying book I just I, I didn't understand why this should have just been a fictional book if you know Emma herself has decided that you know she wants to be child free by choice and she's actually annoyed by all things people ask her I think this would have worked much better as a non-fiction essay collection rather than sort of creating a fictional char character and pretending that these were their thoughts because it didn't feel like that her friends were all annoying she was annoying bye the final book I'm going to talk about is monogram murders by Sophie Hannah um I wrote a big ass review for this one so I would definitely link that down below but yes I gave this book one star oh my god it's audio this was an audiobook and I listened to it an audiobook and it was eight hours long now I, I know people who listen to audiobooks you know eight hours is probably a doozy the audiobooks I listen to are not that long they're about five hours and this was eight hours of torture when you're not liking a book listening to it for eight hours is horrible but I digress so Sophie Hannah has been approved by the Agatha Christie state to, you know, write the new Poirot novels. And I guess doing something like that is really difficult because, you know, you write the new Poirot, but then people have the expectations of the old Poirot, so they're expecting that. And she decided that she was only going to take on Poirot. She wasn't going to take on any of the other characters, which is fine. Like, you know, you need to carve a space out for yourself. So I wasn't really expecting any of the new characters. And let me read the blurb because then we'll go into thoughts. 
It says, Hercule Poirot's quiet supper in London, in a London coffee house, is interrupted when a young woman confides to him that she's about to be murdered. She's terrified with begs Poirot not to find and punish her killer. Once she is dead, she insists, justice will have been done. Later that night, Poirot learns that three guests at a fashionable London hotel have been murdered and a cufflink has been placed in each one's mouth. Could there be a connection with the frightened woman? While Poirot struggles to find together the struggles to put together the bizarre pieces of the puzzle, the murder prepares another hotel bedroom for a fourth victim. And so it begins. Honestly, I feel like I just want to say, read my long ass review. The problem with this book is we don't get the Poirot we know and love. That's fine. I think I started off listening to this wanting the Poirot that I knew and loved. Then I was just like, you know what? Judge this book on its own. Um, and I don't know if that's the right thing to do because actually if you wanted to carve out a niche of, on your own and not have people have any preconceived notions about the detective then just write <laughs> another detective novel series on your own um, because you will always get that comparison like I think it's very hard for people to untie the two and not even just that I don't think they should have to when actually if I'll put the cover on the screen it will be on the screen when it says in large Agatha Christie and then said her name like really small like it's really hard to get people to do that so we don't get the power we know and love i said in my review that i think hannah has sort of picked up on the resentment that agatha christie felt for poro towards the end of her novel and run with that so as a result poro is certainly arrogant he's belittling belittling and he's also a mind reader but the other detective that we have on this is a detective called edward catchpool and i think he's like actually you know quite high up in the ranks a detective and he is the first detective that goes on this crime scene or whatever except he doesn't go to the crime scene because he doesn't like dead bodies so he doesn't go there and you're just like can someone do that if that's their job like just decide that they're not going to go to the crime scene because this is weird and throughout the book it is reiterated to you that he doesn't like dead bodies he doesn't like murder and you get the whole backstory of why he doesn't like that you know having to say goodbye to his dead old granddad and whatnot and we get it the other thing about this book is it's very overwritten. Like, I think that's why it pissed me off even more that it was eight hours long. The book does a lot of telling rather than showing, and it's incredibly overwritten. So things are repeated so many times, like things about the crimes are repeated so many times, but it's just generally quite overwritten about, you know, Pyro did this and Pyro said this, so this means this. And it was just like, we can infer that ourselves. So it was very frustrating. It is worse for a book to be so long and then a book to be so long because actually it's filled with things that shouldn't be there, things that are not necessary. And then the actual crime, maybe it's just me, I could, I could have cared less about the crime. So I think that also pissed me off. Like the crime felt like as it was going on, I was intrigued to find out why. But then it starts going back to whatever year they were in and people being religious. And I'm just like, I don't, I can't fathom people actually caring this much. So therefore to me, this crime doesn't really make that much sense. And to be honest, the video is already getting so long that I don't want to explain the crime that took place because I'm not even sure I fully even remember it anymore. Like I understood it, it was long winded. And I said in my review, actually, this type of book would have made an interesting book for the second or third book in the series because it's quite a long winded one and there's all these twists and turns. I just don't think it was your first one. This is what you should have dived into because it's super long and it's not that interesting. Like the resolve at the end, not that interesting and the final thing to sort of I guess say about this is the end scene one of the things that you know is quite um standard in a Poirot novel is Poirot has like the final scene where he basically does all the people that are sort of concerned with the crime in the room and then reveals who the murderer is but in this one he like tells the story and then it's like oh wait that isn't true because you and this person will stand up and speak and then says oh but that's not true because you and this other person will stand up and speak and you're just like what, what's going on here? <laughs> this is so dramatic and so overplayed out. Like in the end scenes, Poirot is very dramatic. Poirot loves an audience, but this just felt almost comical. <laughs> like, I don't know why she did this because I felt like it just made everyone hate Poirot. And it was super long for the reader because actually you got about three states of like, oh, this is what happened, but actually no, this isn't what happened. And like once that final scene finishes in the sort of, you know, appearance of everyone you then get a couple of other scenes that talk more about the crime and you're just like no sorry usually that's all resolved in the audience section where everyone sat there so why do we have more and that's why it was so overwritten because everything was getting repeated again and again and it was just like oh for god's sake so those are the four books that i read um and gave two one stars those one star books like do you know what actually reading the 
those one star books I didn't apart from maybe the monogram murders because it was so long and I felt like I wanted to DNF them I wanted to keep like reading and listening to them to see if they actually got any better because I was just like oh God. but anyway that is me done talking about all the books that I read whilst I was away from booktube so now I just have to make videos and other things so yeah those will be coming but let me know if there have been any sort of one or two star books that you have read that you have seriously hated. And like I said, with all of these books, I did do good reads for you, so I will link them down in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in another video. Bye.